This video is brought to you by the Edinburgh Watch Company, who specialise in the buying and selling of fine Swiss luxury watches in the beautiful city of Edinburgh and online at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk. Hello and welcome to The Watch Guys. This week we are in the presence of royalty. That's right, this week's watch is the Rolex Daytona Platinum, the 50th anniversary Daytona. So this week's watch is the Rolex Platinum Daytona, the Playtona. This was launched in 2013 for the 50th anniversary of the Daytona. It is therefore a very special watch. It is a true collector's piece and you don't just come across these by accident. This is most certainly a grail watch for many people. It's very hard to get hold of and it is perhaps the ultimate expression of the Daytona. It's got a chestnut brown Cerachrome bezel ice blue dial. It also has a red Daytona lettering just above the seconds marker and the tachymetric scale is actually engraved in the ceramic. There are two variations of this watch. There's this one which I would call the standard which has the brown subdials, and then you can also get a diamond hour marker version. The diamond one is undoubtedly going to be rarer but I actually prefer this classic one. I think when it's 950 platinum and it's got an ice blue dial that's enough bling for me. But before we get started, a quick wristwatch check. And this week, under the black jumper, I've got a brand new purchase. It's the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Rhodium Dial. This was on my list at Rolex, and it has been for some time. But wouldn't you know it, when they announced their new watches this year, this watch was discontinued. So there was suddenly no way I was going to get one new. This is reference 114300. It's a 39 millimeter steel watch. The dial is this beautiful dark gray rhodium and it's got blue hour markers. It is one of the classiest watches you can buy. And now that it's been discontinued by Rolex, you can only buy it second hand. I had to rush out and wouldn't you know it, my good friend Alex at AJW Watches managed to secure one for me. So let me take you through all aspects of this stunning timepiece. The history of the Daytona, the unboxing of this model, the current Daytona range, why I love this watch, and what the future holds. So does that sound good for you? Excellent. Let's crack on. Interestingly, there's only really been five milestones in the Daytona history. Rolex first introduced the chronograph cosmograph in 1963. Reference number 6239. Here it is. It was designed for racing drivers, which meant it had the tachymetric scale on it, which would allow you to measure speed over distance. As you can see, it had a black dial with contrasting white subdials, and it was a manual winding watch. The self-winding Daytona didn't come for another 30 years. Originally, the Cosmograph was called the Le Mans, but after Rolex became the official timekeeper of the Daytona Beach Speedway, it later rechristened it the Daytona. The Daytona International Speedway, incidentally, at the time when it was built in 1959, was the fastest circuit in America. It was also quite likely that this was called the Daytona to help ingratiate Rolex into the American market, and it certainly did that. Rolex Daytona watches are still given to the winners of the Daytona race and many races around the world, even today. In 1965, the Daytona got screw down chronograph pushers rather than the exposed ones. That was to help water resistance and it also led to the fact that Oyster then came onto the dial. Remember at this point, all hand wound Daytonas used the Caliber 72 Vijou movement. Over the 60s and 70s, there were various important references in the Daytona bloodline, including the Paul Newman dials, which have achieved almost mythical status. You can tell a Paul Newman dial by the fact that it uses square blocks in the subdials and a different font. It also has an additional seconds counter around the inside of the dial itself, right up flush with the bezel. Then in 1988 came the first big change for the Daytona and it was the self-winding 4030 movement, which put an end to hand-wound Daytonas and ushered in a new era 
of ease of use. This was also the time that superlative chronometer appeared on the dial, and the new 40mm case came with new hands, new hour markers, and larger subdials. These models are now known as the Zenith Daytoners because they featured a modified version of the Zenith Primero movement. Then just 12 years later, in the year 2000, Rolex ditched that Zenith movement and brought in their own in-house 4130 movement, which is what persists even to this day. The 4130 had 60% less components than the previous movement and also actually had Daytona written on it. And then in 2016 came the current ceramic bezel version of the Daytona in white dial and black dial form. Rolex continues to sponsor many of the most important races on the calendar, including the 24 hour of Le Mans, Formula One, and of course the Daytona race itself. And it also has brand ambassadors like Sir Jackie Stewart and Mark Webber. Rolex has remained fully ingrained in the motorsport world since the 50s. And it's hard to imagine a race without Rolex banners all over the place as the cars whiz by. So that's the history of the Daytona, one of Rolex's most iconic and important watches. The current Daytona range has something for everyone. There are many different variations. You've got steel, you've got two-tone, you've got yellow gold, you've got rose gold, you've got white gold, and you've got platinum. And pretty much all of those come with normal or diamond hour marker variants. And you can select different types of dials to go with different configurations. So now let's go into Unboxo Vision and I'll take you through the full unboxing of this very special watch. As you can see, the now familiar green ruche leather effect Rolex box. But wait, what's this? It appears to be flipping massive. Yes, that's right. The important range topping status of the Platinum Daytona is matched by the fact that it has a double sized Rolex box to fit in. And as you open up that box, inside you have an enormous pocket in the back where you of course keep your registration card and guarantee and manual. And then there's the Daytona itself sat in the familiar cream cushion, surely one of the greatest Rolexes of all time. So why do I find this watch so interesting? Well, come on. Obviously, it's because it's the anniversary Daytona. It is the range topping model. Nothing gets better than this. It's instantly recognizable. It's completely iconic. That ice blue is only used by platinum Rolexes, so you know instantly that it's the Platinum 950 version. The brown goes absolutely perfectly with that ice blue dial. It's ridiculously heavy. It's heavier, incidentally, than a Nautilus 5980, and I never thought I'd say that. And the byproduct of that weight is that really you need to wear it very snugly on the wrist because any play or movement coupled with that weight will lead to momentum, which will lead to chafing, which will lead to pain. It's got a 72 hour power reserve, so it's very usable. You don't have to keep meddling with it. Current Daytonas are all waterproof to 100 meters. As with all Daytonas, it's pretty difficult to actually read, but the ice blue and the brown does work quite well, so it's better than most. Wearing this watch, you really feel like you're part of watch royalty. Part of a dynasty that goes all the way back to a time when there were no waiting lists and you could actually walk into a dealership and buy a watch and walk out with it. The stuff of a madman's dreams now. I never thought I'd actually own a brand new version of this watch because I didn't believe that it was ever going to become available. Ironically, the yellow gold green dial still eludes me, but that's another story. There are rumors that this watch was going to be discontinued this year. And in fact, when Rolex announced its new range, everyone thought that this was going to be ditched, but it's still here. At the point that it is discontinued, I have no doubt it will probably become one of Rolex's all time greats and will therefore have a price tag to reflect that. It is an incredibly handsome watch. That ice blue dial is stunning. It changes color in all different lights. The brown serochrome bezel goes from being sort of a dark brown to a dark ox bloody red color, depending on the lighting. The level of finishing, the level of detail, that little red Daytona written on there, just like the early ones. It really is a stunning watch. 
and forms the center point of any Daytona collection. And I happened to see a platinum day date in Monaco recently, and that looked stunning too. I mean, what a pairing that would be. So what about the buying story then for this watch? Did it involve intrigue? Did it involve bribery? Did it involve some clandestine meeting in order to be able to get one of these things? Well, no, actually. This one came, as many of my others have, from my ever-growing relationship with Lanes in Southampton. It was on my list, but I never thought for a minute that I was going to actually get offered one of these. But surprisingly quickly, I did. Now, whether that's the fact that the overseas markets were lessening because of the pandemic and therefore there was more supply coming to the UK, possibly. But it does mean that I have a brand new Platinum Daytona with my name on the papers and it's now part of the collection. Values of Platinum Daytonas tended to be below RRP, somewhere between three and five thousand pounds. However, I've noticed in the last six months values have started to climb on these and a quick peruse through the watch selling websites now will find them on average anywhere between 63 and 67 thousand pounds for a used one of these. This watch now sits in the collection next to my original 116520 black dial Daytona and also my current white gold blue face Daytona and I think they sit quite nicely together as three examples of what makes the Daytona such a great watch. Will I ever use it to measure time over distance at a racetrack? No. So thank you for watching this episode on the Platinum Daytona. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed seeing another watch in my collection. If you like what I'm doing on the watchguys.tv, please subscribe, leave comments and likes on all the videos that you watch. And there'll be another Watch Guys TV episode along next week.